Hello again, and uh, today we're going to be discussing a video clip that was produced on a morning show here in Australia called Studio 10. And basically, it's um, bring it, they bring Peter Lloyd on, who wrote a book um, about manhood, and they're going to shame him and you know dole out the usual myths of feminism uh, in doing so. So let's get into the clip. All right, well, there has never been a worse time to be a man. Tell me about really? it. Really? Yeah, according to a controversial new book, apparently men are being ridiculed, abused and exploited and have become second-class citizens. Mm. And guess what? It's all <laughs> women's fault. You see the way she introduced that segment? Her tone really annoys me. You know, go on Tumblr and see if men are under attack. Look at homeless statistics, incarceration rates, the family court, the school system... Everything's being feminized. Men are under attack, make no mistake. I just find it incredible that with the fem feminization of today's society, that suggesting men might be in a little bit of trouble is met with instant sarcasm and disbelief. Do you know what men need to do? They need to grow a set, really. Was, <laughs> well, Peter Lloyd is the author of Stand By Your Manhood and he joins us live from London. Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Jeez, mate, where to start? Um, you seem to be really angry in your book. What is it exactly that you have against women? What a typical feminist response. You're criticising feminism, man. You must really be angry toward women. It's just a shaming tactic. And he doesn't pull her up on it, which is kind of disappointing. He'll just, you know, accept it as a joke and move on, which I think damages his cause more than helps it. I don't think at all. I absolutely love women. Uh, I have to say, this may surprise you, but my mother is a woman. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have three wonderful sisters who I love, but I, nobody ever is honest with men about, about the real world. Uh, and so, I, you know, we've had books like The Female Eunuch and How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran, and I just thought it was high time that us men had our version. You say that... Um women uh, spend a lot of time looking for Mr. Right. They're very critical. You actually reckon blokes shouldn't get married. Why not? Yeah, I, I do. Well, I mean, if I'm honest, marriage is a raw deal. Uh, it's, it's a contract. And when it goes wrong for men, they often lose their home. They often can't see their children. They lose half of their fortune. And it can just be really psychologically damaging. I just think, have a great relationship, go for it. Pursue, pursue love and everything, but just don't get married. It's a contract you don't need. <laughs> oh, Peter, as a happily married woman for 11 years, I'd have to disagree with you. Until you're not happy, then your husband gets fucked by the system. It is absolutely a contract that men don't need. And, and really, how can you say men have been hard done by? I mean, what evidence do you really have to back that up? Look, I, I know it sounds oxymoronic, but bear with me. It's like when somebody first tells you about infinity. You can't quite take it in at first. You have to keep thinking about it, but it's true. I've, I've studied lots of empirical data and, you know, from school, the school system is failing boys. Men are a minority at universities. Uh, really? The, 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 the life what expectancy gap... Really? What universities? This is a well-known fact, even in Australia. In 2012, 195,000 people graduated from university, and 60% were female. This took me like one minute to find on Google. It's astonishing how brainwashed women are about how bad they have it, and how good men have it. Also on a side note, because they'll bring up the pay gap in a minute, in information technology, 15% were women graduating. But in society and culture, 66% women. Fucking useless. <laughs> also, look at this image that I found. Um, clearly a fake. Women don't do science. Most universities uh, have men as a minority group. But they end up uh, earning more later in life in their careers. They end up being on the boards of more companies. They end up running more countries. So it sort of seems a bit oxymoronic, as you put it. Because we don't have the opportunity to bear children. Also, men study more useful degrees, as I've pointed out before, which have higher paying jobs. This is where the guy really dropped the ball. He goes on to say some nonsense about the family and, you know, women controlling the spending, which is true, but he should have stuck more on point about this and really focused on the choices women make when they go into the workforce. Uh, it's interesting to note in the article I linked above, um, 
where I was discussing graduation rates, women versus men. Um, as societies become more free, you can actually see a decline in women in STEM fields. Like information technology went from 22% women to 15% women um, as more freedom was achieved. So, case in point. That you guys well, are being true. oppressed. Well, look, it's it's true, but uh, you know, looking at uh, who runs, uh, you know, boardrooms and and companies is only one way of measuring, uh, you know, how equal society is. If you look at the heads of families, it's women Not really who hold all, though, all, is it? all, all, all of it. It is oppression, really. I mean. It, it might not be the kind of oppression that we're used to seeing and hearing, but but it's absolutely real. So let me let me hold on, hold on, ladies. Give us a go. <laughs> yeah, stop nagging him to death for fuck's sake. <laughs> You've had a pretty good run. <laughs> more men are incarcerated. More men kill themselves. More men die at war. More men are homeless. What's the problem with men? Mm. <laughs> well, I think. I, Listen to that cackling cunt in the audience. She reacts with pure glee when hearing how tough men have it. It's absolutely disgusting. I think, I think the big difference is that men have, uh, gender roles have changed so much in the last 50 years, but men are still programmed to be used on their utility. So men are considered disposable and, and feminism for all its, I mean, it's done some wonderful things, but at the same time, it's really kind of, you know, ignored a lot of men's issues and they've just worsened over 50 years. So while women's uh, liberation has kind of like gone like this, men's, men's lifestyles have, have kind of gone like that. Uh, and, and all I'm saying in the book is I'm not blaming women for these problems, but I'm saying feminism, oi, it's time we like started sharing the platform here. Uh, Peter, do you have a girlfriend? No, I don't. I'm single. Funny. <laughs> 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 There's that cackling cunt again. With people like her out there, I'm not surprised he is single. Just rub one out later, mate. In, in all seriousness, can I ask, how have you actually been oppressed by women? Like, have you, has, has there ever been a time in your life where you think, you know what, those, you know, darn cotton-picking women have got one up on me, you know? That's racist? Has it ever happened? Because I don't think it's ever happened to me. I don't think it's ever really happened to anyone I know. Well, I mean, that is, that is the common misconception, but so many of these things are so insidious. Uh, I mean, here in the UK, uh, I mean, it's, it's depressing to talk about, but male suicide is at an all-time high. It's at a 15-year high. Uh, and and I, I know we're kind of joking about it here, but there are some really serious issues that are affecting are men. Are saying they're killing themselves nobody because is talking of women? About them. Or they're killing no, themselves because it's... of feminism? Well, I mean, I, I think we have to be re realistic here. I mean, it's a very complex issue. But certainly one of the things that is a contributing factor, I'm sure, is the constant denigration of men. Like, this that casual, fashionable man bashing we see all the time. <sighs> Hashtag kill all men. Well I, well, I wouldn't say that was true. I mean, only two weeks ago, I had to go to the memorial of a friend who killed himself, and he was a doctor at one of London's best hospitals. So it's absolutely not just taking place in rural areas. And, you know, e even, if, even if it were, feminism and this kind of man-bashing is so pervasive in the media, it's everywhere. You can't escape it. it, it I mean Calling all manginas, hashtag he for she. Fuck off. Is, but is being pro-women really being anti-men? And after, you know, after so long at the top of the tree, I mean, it's only been really 30, 40 years that, we've, that women have started to find equal footing. I mean, is it more that you're just kind of getting a bit annoyed that your, your place at the top of the tree is being challenged? No, crikey, I was never at the top of the tree. Uh, I... It was, uh, look, my, my book is edited by a woman. Uh, all the experts I cite in the book are almost all women uh, because this isn't about men versus women. I'm not interested in that. You know, I love women. I respect them. I want them to be equal. Uh, it's exciting that we're on the, on the eve of possibly uh, the, America's first female president. But this isn't about men versus women. This is about unequal versus equal. If you look at men's health spending in Australia, I think men's health ranked 36th in, prior, in the priority list. That is absolutely atrocious when our life expectancy gap is huge and it's increased massively over 100 years. No politician or, or any government body is doing anything about that. I mean, that to me does not sound like we are living you know, the life of Riley, uh, you know, basking in privilege. It's just not true. 
Shut up, you cisgendered, white, heteronormative misogynist. Check your privilege. Can't we just all get along? Yes, <laughs> let's do it. What? Together, like, you know, let's I'm make pretty, a difference. I'm pretty together. sure hospitals treat people based on who's about to die soonest, rather than what gender you are. But anyway. Well, look, it's it's a, it's a very controversial and a fascinating new book. Obviously, it's uh, provoking a lot of talk, a lot of debate. Peter Lloyd, thank you very much for joining us. I mean, a lot of shit was said in that last section that I'm not even going to deal with, but um, he's absolutely right in regards to men's health spending in Australia. Also, men die at a greater rate than, rate than women here. So, for every two women that die, three men will. 78% um, of suicides are male. It's, it's a disgrace that our healthcare system greatly neg neglects men. I guess I'll just check my privilege on the way out. Cheers.